Hi, this is Ron Edwards, Master Sommelier and Director of Wine Education for Winebow. And I really wanted to point your attention to the idea of Brunello di Montalcino and specifically to Nuda San Giorgio. Uh, this is a property started in the early 80s and um, this particular bottling, Ugol Forte, started in 1985. And it's, it's kind of cool because it's named after um, a Robin Hood of sorts, a, a, a 12th century bandit that turned as a rebel leader in, in an uprising uh, for to break away from Siena, so it's got a, it's got an interesting history to the name, uh, and sort of uh, not too distant from the idea of how Brunello sort of broke away from the rest of Tuscany, focusing 100% on Sangiovese instead of blending like in Chianti, and how their decisions to do that as a small group of wineries has now blossomed into 250 wineries uh, in the last 35, 40 years. Um, it is now a calling card for Italy, for the world, uh, and most collectors and wine interested folks have heard of Brunello. So Brunello de Montalcino is named after the town of Montalcino, and it is always 100% Sangiovese. So uh, this wine sees um, some um, small barrel, but mostly large, like 50 hectoliter oak barrels. And the idea is to soften the wine, but not really have the wine be dominated by any of the flavors of oak. The oak becomes window dressing uh, instead of a prominent figure. Let's, let's find out what it smells like. So the 2015 vintage really rings true. It's uh, exceptionally pure. It's pure cherry and uh, cherry cordial. It's uh, oregano meets sage. It's got a little bit of a um, dusty um, lumber sawdust meets cedar kind of note from the oak aging. Tanned leather. Dried cherry and craisin, you know, dried cranberries. There's a little bit of uh, this beautiful potpourri sort of essence where it's the dried rose petals and, um, and, and dried orange peels. really rings true to the idea of Brunello being that, that really uh, power-packed approach to Sangiovese. But Brunello isn't always a sledgehammer. Some wines are, this is not. This wine has an elegance to it and it has, it has power, but it's really well developed into a refreshing fruit profile. It's not uh, driven by oak, but it's there as a nuance. It has that tannic grip that will easily stand up to a beautiful steak, but it doesn't require that in order to enjoy the wine. I really like how the, this wine has been crafted to be elegant. One of the things that comes across in the palate that I didn't really mention in the nose, although it was there, is that classic sort of soy, salty, umami thing that is Sangiovese especially. I really like how that plays in this wine with the the fruits that I already mentioned. They they move from some sort of dried back into uh, fresh. So it's fresh cherry, tart cherry, cranberry juice, um, and alongside of just a bit of dried fruit. The um, this the herbal nature is definitely there that I mentioned before. It's sort of like uh, dried oregano um, moving towards thyme and sage. The 2015 vintage is what we're tasting, by the way. Beautifully deft, really nice wine. Definitely meets the expectations um, without being heavy handed. I'll definitely, if you if you really haven't experienced Brunello de Montalcino that isn't heavy on new oak or isn't, you know, 14.2 or 14.5% alcohol. Those styles are great. This is a different style. This is a, a more uh, refreshing style. It's more um, 
perhaps a little bit closer to pure Sangiovese in its essence. Um, and I definitely think you should give this wine a try. Uh, Tenuta San Giorgio is making beautiful wines. His, the winemaker is known for wines of elegance, and this wine certainly reflects that. Go out and find a bottle.